Hello fellow movie mammoths, welcome to my review of Warcraft. Now as the title would suggest, there is plenty of war as well as witchcraft in the latest video game to come to the big screen. This one is based on the worldwide phenomenon from Blizzard Entertainment, World of Warcraft, one of the biggest online MMOs of all time. This movie promised a CG extravaganza akin to the rebooted Planet of the Apes franchise, and that it uses a large chunk of entirely CG characters and landscapes too. We open up on the Orc Horde as they prepare to travel through a transporter created by an evil warlock orc using an evil type of magic called Fell. Now this evil warlock has a fantastic design from his cloak to his bony back and his ominous presence. It all makes for a compelling and menacing villain right off the bat. Not to mention his magic feeds off the lives of slaves. All of this sets up a truly evil character to be reckoned with. We are also introduced to our hero work and his wife and newborn child, a newborn who is infected by the fell upon birth and so will seemingly grow into a truly evil orc. There's a lot to this movie and it's asked to introduce quite a bit, and so the first act is quite quick and we're thrust all over the world, from Dwarven City to Human City to Mage's Library and whatnot. I would refer to these characters by name, but most of them are incredibly complex and yet similar to one another, like every orc name, so I'll refer to most of them by their defining characteristics or occupations. We meet the king and queen of the humans as well as our human hero, Lothar, who has a son, remember that, it'll be important for later, and a mage kid who quit his mage practices, but luckily after the sweet part where he learned a bunch of spells and the Guardian, who is like the only other mage who bothers to show up for an extended amount of time in this movie. So after we meet all our characters, they start scouting for these so-called monsters invading their land, and end up confronting them in a forest, where Lothar takes the hand of the evil second-in-command orc. And may I say, the evil second-in-command also has a fantastic design. Most of all the orcs really did look great and had their own distinguishing features, which was helpful considering how samey a bunch of giant green guys can end up looking if not done properly. This is where the humans take half-orc lady captive and where hero orc starts to realize how much evil the fell brings to whatever it touches. Half-orc lady agrees to help the humans stop the evil warlock from teleporting the rest of the horde here so that they can destroy their world. Up to this point, the movie had been entirely enjoyable. There were some small moments of comedy and some interesting action sequences especially those involving the direwolves attacks and the brutality of the orcs against the humans. Most of the characters I found to be rather one-dimensional, unfortunately. Lothar was one of the only ones who stood out from the rest of the caricatures in the movie. He actually brought some levity and some ingenuity to a rather plain cast of characters we have seen done so many times before, like Hero Orc, for example, who I call Hero Orc because that's his only trait. He's a good guy because he likes being good and he only does what's good which isn't inherently a bad thing for a character, except when it's done without any other cracks or realism infused into them. So Hero Orc decides to parlay with the humans in order to take down the evil warlock, but they are ambushed when Hero Orc's friend, Bald Hammer Orc, betrays them. This is where the movie really went downhill. The Guardian cast an electric shield around our good guys, but not quite around Lothar's son, unfortunately. This is the kid who, when he nicked his eyebrow, was sent to medbay for some reason, but don't worry, he's headed back out there soon because I quote, I'm a soldier, one of his only three lines, and delivered like it was in a high school play. But anyways, Lothar is separated from his son and has to watch him fight to his death, right after he says, for Azeroth, as if he had just watched every other movie where this exact scene happens. But once again, it was delivered so poorly it failed to get across just how dire and futile the situation was. Then to top it all off, his fighting style was a joke. He only has one move, stab in the chest, which worked once somehow, and then immediately didn't because duh, that's not how you sword fight. And oh no, look, it's evil second in command orc who lost his hand to Lothar. And he kills his son with his sword and replacement. Oh, the irony is too much. And to top off the whole mishandled mess of a scene, Lothar has literally no reaction to watching this all happen. Not a tear, not a scream, not even a cry for vengeance, nothing. Which is kind of a fitting cherry to this terribly melted mess of a Sunday we just watched. I mean, Lothar says in the movie his son is all he has, and he watched the last thing he has in this world ripped away from him, and literally has no reaction. I mean, a couple scenes later he gets drunk, but that's it. Come on. 
you really gotta have more of a reaction to that than just watching it happen. That's not enough. It's not enough to make me feel anything or to make me feel like you feel anything. So then we learned the Guardian was actually the one who summoned the Orcs and that he was corrupted by the Fell. Must have been off screen because he showed absolutely no signs of this corruption until the script required him to, which sure was convenient if not annoyingly useful. So the newly evil Guardian returns to the King as he is deciding how to deal with the Orc problem. Lothar wants them to attack with full force and stop the transporter from activating, but the Guardian eggs him on about how his son's dead, so the King throws Lothar in jail. Are you kidding me? So the Guardian instead convinces the King to attack the transporter, but with less people? And the King decides to leave Lothar in jail? And not like you'd need your second in command and best fighter at a time like this, I guess. But luckily, Mage Kid gets Lothar out, and they head off to fight the evil Guardian while the King and Half Orc Lady go off to fight the orcs. But not before Hero Orc challenges Evil Warlock to single combat, no magic, which appears to be a traditional orc ritual for settling arguments. We get a pretty cool fight scene out of this confrontation, but just as Hero Orc planned, he shows the orcs the warlock's true colors when he cheats and sucks out his soul in order to win. And it works! The orcs are disgusted by this cheating, and Bald Hammer Orc declares he ain't gonna follow this demon, and neither should anyone else. Warlock responds to this by sucking out his soul as well, and then three other orcs just for good measure. Oh man, now he's really exposed. It's over. No way are they gonna follow him now. He has absolutely zero honor. Oh, wait a minute. We got a third act battle to do. Oh, of course. What were we thinking? Never mind. We'll come back to this later. And poof. All of the orcs are totally okay fighting for him again. None of them care about anything they just witnessed, and hero orc sacrifice was completely nullified. They just completely butchered this whole conclusion and skipped over it because of the big battle sequence they knew they were going to need. So in come the humans to fight the orcs. Good thing they brought along their dwarven guns with unlimited bullets so they really would have been destroyed by the orcs. At the same time this is happening, the other battle is raging as well. The Guardian brings to life the golem that he had been working on earlier, and then they drop it on him in order to stop the transporter. And then, Little Mage Kid is like the best at magic, and he can overpower the fell that corrupted the most powerful mage in the world, but not him, because he's a good guy. Then the Guardian turns good again, I guess, because they still need to tie up some loose ends. He helps the humans teleport their captives back to their city, and then says sorry again before he dies. That's the biggest problem with this third act. The plot started to dictate characters' actions rather than the other way around. And it was done in such a ridiculous and blatant way, it completely differed from everything we'd learned up to that point in the movie. So now the humans are losing the battle again, because plot says so, and the king tells half-orc lady she has to kill him in order to make peace. What? What are you talking about, dude? But she does it anyway, and then she gets to crowd surf around before being accepted by the orcs. And then Lothar shows up on his griffin, but about ten minutes too late. And ten griffins too short. I mean, where are all the griffins? You seriously can't tell me Lothar has the last one ever? They need a whole cavalry of those dudes. This is one of the things that's representative of the problems with this movie. I would have loved to see more dwarven things, more of the elves, more, more fantasy elements. I mean, we pretty much just got humans and orcs with a little bit of cameos from everybody else. It would have been great to have some of those other races represented in the party to get to know more of this world in the first movie. But of course, it'll probably just be in the sequel just like everything else that was supposed to be in this movie. Whatever though. But now Lothar has to single combat fight the orc that killed his son, a battle we've been building up to for the whole movie. And I thought for a second, we might get something cool in all of this nonsense. But no! Lothar slices his dick off in one blow and it's over just like that. Ugh. Talk about a huge letdown and come on. What could have been an awesome fight, fought tooth and nail with great emotional stakes, just ended immediately. Why did it end before it even got started? But now Warlock is pissed and he's telling everyone to kill Lothar. So basically the same thing we saw 20 minutes ago with hero work. And just when he's about to blow his top and destroy the last bit of goodwill he has with his troops and cause them to turn on him once and for all, half work lady convinces him to cool it and that they need to win the war, not the battle. What the fuck, lady? 
Why did you just save this evil, fell-wielding, world-destroying monster? You could have ended the war right there and possibly made some kind of deal to give your people lands, but oh, oh, wait, I get it. You have to set up a sequel. Once again, plot has to dictate character choices. But when that happens, all you ever end up getting is a bad initial movie. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened here. Now Lothar thinks half-orc lady killed the king and switched sides because the king's plan was friggin' stupid, but now it makes sense why he had that plan, and why it happened at all. They just wanted to set up the characters as enemies for the possible sequel. So in the end, the king sacrifices himself, hero orc sacrifices himself, and the evil warlock is still in complete control of his army and spreading evil magic across the land. Great job, good guys. It's really disappointing that they got so caught up with the next movie, they forgot to finish making this movie. Because I was totally on board for a while. Some of the characters were interesting enough, and the world they were building was absolutely beautiful and expansive and had so much room to explore. There were definitely some cool moments in this film, and I wouldn't say it's a complete waste of time. It's just that like with so many other movies nowadays, it got so caught up building a franchise and setting up the next movie, it ruined the ending of what could have been a perfectly good movie in its own right. It's the Amazing Spider-Man 2 syndrome that seems to creep into so many studio execs' head nowadays that end up dooming the movie in its own place. If they'd spent a little less time setting themselves up for next time, and a little more time providing at least a second dimension for a lot of these characters, they may have had a real chance of making something awesome on its own. Overall, I'd give this movie a 4.8 out of 10. For a while there, I was enjoying the movie quite a bit. But the finale was so downright angering that I ended up leaving the theater with a completely sour taste in my mouth. And with that in mind, I can't give it a positive review. Especially considering the lack of compelling characters that inhabited what had the potential to be such an amazing and unique movie world. Now there's one other thing I didn't mention because it's also just straight up sequel bait. In the middle of this movie, Hero Work's wife and unborn child run off from the encampment and his wife leaves the baby to float down the river straight out of Moses, and then she ends up dying. But at the very end, the, they find the orc, someone finds it, and I don't know, I guess he's gonna be in the next one? He's corrupted by the fell though, so I can't really get on board with him because he's clearly just gonna be straight up evil. It's kinda weird though. Um, that's why I didn't include it, because it literally didn't affect anything that happened in this entire movie. It was just complete sequel bait. This really was a disappointing result for me. This was one of the biggest landmark video game movies we've had in a while, and a lot of hopes and dreams of other video game franchises rested on the shoulders of this one. And they were really close to making something at least passable, and then it all just went to shit at the end. Which is super disappointing because now, the hopes are even higher on Assassin's Creed, but Assassin's Creed it has to hold an even bigger load now. So hopefully Michael Fassbender can make that into a good movie and we can actually maybe get some more video game movies out there because I think a lot of video game movies have the potential to be great on the big screen. It's just people like Yui Bull keep ruining their name and things like Warcraft get too obsessed with CG and building a world and making a franchise. How about we build one good video game movie before we get off on the next trail of making six more? Because there's never been one unless you're counting Laura Croft Tomb Raider or Prince of Persia. So maybe we should just get one thing right before we set the table for six more meals. Well anyways guys and gals, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment, a like or a down button or subscribe if you feel like it. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys thought of the movie. What are, what's your favorite video game movie? Are there any good video game movies? What can make a great video game movie? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation about that. But anyways, until next time, this is Movie Mammoth signing out. Thanks, guys and gals.